Shabbat Shalom. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Praise Yah for you all joining us today. Uh, this is part six of our message, uh, A Set Apart Life, part six. Uh, today, uh, we, we're going to use um, the, the slides and the, and the Bible uh, on, on the screen um, uh, to teach the word of Yah today. Uh, this, is how, this, is, this is just how Yah has it for us right now, to, because we're going to need to go through the scriptures and, and, and we have scriptures on our slide. We're going to be doing a lot of scriptures and bringing certain words out so people can have a better understanding of certain things. So hallelujah. So, so this is part six again of our message, uh, a set apart life. Our foundational scriptures, Leviticus 20, uh, verse 7 says, uh, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye Kodesh. You know, for I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Now, let, 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 let's pray so we, so we can go and dive in. Because we... We, we, we on fire. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. So, Almighty Yahweh, we thank you for your compassion. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness and your love and kindness. As we come before your presence in the, in the spirit of humility, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we ask you, Almighty Yah, again, continue to please forgive us of all of our sins and please have mercy upon us, Almighty, according to your Hasid, your love and kindness. I pray, Almighty Yah, in the name of Yahushua, that as we uh, teach your word today, that you would touch every person that's listening to your word. Uh, let them not fall upon deaf ears. Let them not fall upon wayside ground or stony ground or thorny ground. But I pray that your word will fall in the good ground, Almighty God, so that those who hear it can get a good understanding and begin to see you from a different perspective. So I pray as well, Almighty God, that you would help us to grow in faith. Uh, for your word says that we, the faith comes from hearing and hearing your word. Help us to grow in our faith and our trust in you and have a, a clear understanding as well. And I pray for the spirit of wisdom, Almighty God, and help us to apply the spirit of wisdom uh, to our life, Almighty I uh, ask you to deliver, save, make, make free, and keep us whole. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, uh, <clears throat> so I want to I want to say this um, again, just to kind of give some give some, um, some 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 foundational foundation for what we're saying. So 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 Yah, the Most High, wants us to be set apart. Um, that, that, that's what He wants uh, in us. So, let me, again, just let you all know who he is. Uh, again, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, and some of, and, 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 and some of, some of you all's Bible, it says the word God. And this may be controversial, but we can challenge it and try. I don't mind that. The Most High, Yah, does not want us to see him as a God. I think it's because the word God and the word Elohim are not the same word, don't have the same meaning. You know, not at all. But Yah wants us to, us to see him as, 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 as a father. And the word Elohim, it means uh, uh, a mighty one. You know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't mean uh, 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 God like we think. It means mighty one uh, uh, or, or a judge. Uh, as a matter of fact, a, an angel is called a mighty one. In Psalms 82, we were called uh, uh, mighty ones. Yahushua said in, in John 10 as well, uh, you are all gods. It's, 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 it's the word they have there, but it's the word Elohim, meaning, meaning that we are mighty ones, meaning that we have dominion, we have authority. Uh, the Most High says in Genesis 1, verse 26, it says this. It says, and Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Uh, the image uh, is a um, is the word uh, 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 Selene. Um, uh, his uh, a figure of him. Or he wants to he, he wants to make us uh, um, uh, a figure of him. Or oh, they got some stuff going on. To resemble him, uh, he wants he wants us to resemble him, and and, and so to resemble Yah. Uh, uh, first of all, Yah is not a man. You know, num num numbers. Um, 22 says clearly that Yah is not a man. It says he's not a man, he should lie. So he so 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 the image of Yah is not this human body that you see. The image of Yah is a spirit, a ruach. And so we were made in the image of Yah first. So he says, let us make, let us make man in our image. And so that word Elohim is a mighty one, not God. So the most high wants you to see him not as God. Or as a God, he wants you to see him as your father. Yes. He refers to that's wrong. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, which means I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. 
I am your who, your mighty one. Your mighty one. Uh, that's in Genesis 1. Genesis 2 uh, comes on when, 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 when it talks about, uh, the, it, it brings up the word, the word Lord. Now that word Lord um, means, mean, uh, it, it's a bad translation to English uh, from my perspective because uh, they named a, a false idol, they named him uh, by all. They say the word Lord, uh, Lord of the flies, so to speak. People say, oh, Lord, the Lord have mercy. But his name is not Lord. The word Lord also can, the word Lord also can be translated to the word Adonai or Adoni or, or, or Master. But the word Lord, when you look in the, word, in, in the book of Genesis and you see the word Lord, it, it's, it's the Hebrew word that's supposed to be there. It's the word Yahuwah. Some folks say some folks say Yahweh, Yahweh, you know, uh, Yahweh, you know, Yah Yah Yahweh, you know, that's fine because people are trying to get the right pronunciation. You know, from my perspective, the correct pronunciation for the word uh, uh, Yah is <coughs> Yahuwah. That's how I pronounce Yah's name, Yahuwah. Uh, it's a you, a hey, a vav, and a hey. And that, 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 that's a self existent one or the eternal creator. Um, that's that that's that's who he is. He's not Lord like we think. Uh, how we speak it. And so now, when you look at the word, uh, uh, uh for example, uh, this is two and five. This, this is an example. This is two and five says this. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, it says, for the Lord God had not caused the rain upon the earth, and there was not not a man to till the ground. But in the Hebrew, it says Yahuwah Elohim. So Yahuwah, the mighty one, or Yahuwah, the mighty one, um, uh, had not caused the rain. So his name is Yahuwah. His name is Yah. For short, we say Yah. But, I'm, but I mean Yahuwah. And he's a father. He told Pharaoh, oh, let's go to Exodus. He tells Pharaoh about um, about about uh, Israel. He tells Pharaoh. He says um, that Yasharal, you know, um, is his firstborn. He 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 tells Pharaoh, Moses to tell Pharaoh that Israel is my firstborn. So let's go to this is Exodus four. Verse 22, it says this, And thou shalt say to Pharaoh, Thus says Yahuwah, Yasharal is my son, even my firstborn. So he's my being, he's my son, or, 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 or even grandson, that word can, can mean. And he is my firstborn. That's what Yah says to Yasharal. Verse 23 says this, and I, say, and I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if you refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay your son, even your firstborn. That's what Yah tells Pharaoh. So the Most High sees Yasharal as a son, and he so he don't so he don't see you as just a regular person. You are his son, and so if therefore if he tells Pharaoh that you are his son, how do you think? Honestly, be honest with yourself. Don't deceive yourself out of the religious spirit. Quit care about religious people. Let's deal with reality. If he tells Pharaoh that Yasharal is his son, how do you honestly think he wants you to see him? Do you think Yahweh wants you to see him as God, but Pharaoh to see you as his son? No, I really believe that he wants you to see yourself as his son as well. He wants you to see him as your father. Because when you get the concept of Yah being your father, then you can live a set apart life because then you have a desire to be like your father. See, a human being can't grasp the concept of trying to be like a God. How do I be like a God? Yah never asked you to be like a God. He asks you, he tells you, commands you to be mighty, to be a mighty one. He tells you to be set apart. Because when you're set apart, 
You have authority. You are like him. And so now it makes a lot of sense when Yahushua says in John 14.30, let's go to John 14.30. John 14, verse 30, says this. This is what he says. He says, Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. I want to focus on that part. He said, the prince of this world coming, and he has nothing in me. Why would the adversary have nothing in Yahushua? Because Yahushua is not giving him anything. Because Yahushua is set apart like his father walking in his father's ways, so he's not giving the adversary anything to accuse him of. He's not giving the adversary any kind of excuse to accuse him of sin because he's not walking in sin. He is walking set apart. He's walking like Yah says to be walking. So, so, so with that being said, I'm going to go to my first scripture today. It's on the screen. hope you all can see it. My first scripture that I'm going to use today is, uh, is Numbers 25. Numbers 20, excuse me, excuse me, I'm sorry. Numbers 13. So here's Numbers 13. The Most High is talking to Yasharal. And, 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 and so he's telling Moshe, uh, or Moses, as some of you all uh, know, know, know the English word, the Hebrew word is Moshe. So he's telling Moses, I want you to get, uh, so, some say, 10 spies. These were not, ne not necessarily however spies, but let's just read. Um, Start at, let's start at verse one, um, then. So so we so we can um, 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 read. Verse one thirteen and one says this. And remember this word Lord. If you are looking, this word Lord is the word Yah Yahuwah. And I want and, and, and I gotta teach, teach this so that you can understand. So it's the word Yah. So this this is a you a hey a vav and a hey. This vowel has a dot, a dot on top that gives the oo sound. So, and then, 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 then you have a yo. And so now th these two, these two little dots. I forgot the name of these, these, these little dots in this T. But anyway, these two little dots makes the yo produce the sound yay, yay, hoo wa. So you got a yo and a hey. Then, 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 then this, 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 uh, this, um. Dot dot make you want to say who ah so his name is Yahuwah. It means self existent or some people say Jehovah, but Jehovah is not really a good name because there was no J's mm. in the English alphabet, so it, it can't be Jehovah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I mean, it, 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 there was no J's in the original English alphabet. Yeah, that's true. There's no J ever in the Hebrew alphabet. Right. No J sound. Period. Mm. Uh, but in the English alphabet, when the English word first came, language first came out. There was no J sound, so Jehovah is a bad translation. And it's definitely not Jewish. <laughs> the Jewish people are not a real people. They are, they are not a nation. The true Israel is the so-called African American in, 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 uh, in America. Well, excuse me, let me, let, me, let me fix that. So the true uh, um, uh, Judah, mm. the Judah and some of Benjamin, mm. and some of no, Judah and Benjamin, made up the tribe of Judah. Then you have Levi. He had 48 cities through all of Israel. So 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 Judah is a so-called black man or an African American in America. You are Israel. You are Judah. You are not black. You are not Negro. You are not African. You you are Israel. You, you if you identify with being black, being colored, being Negro or African, that's because your slave master told you that's who you was. That's how we got our identification over here in America by someone telling us. And we never took the time, many of us, to read and research for ourselves. But I have, and I'm telling you of a truth, that you black men are not black. Black is not a nationality. Black is the color of a crayon or black tires. You don't see nothing black on me but my hair. So you can't be black. But anyway, so now again, Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, Send thou men that, thou, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel of every tribe of their fathers, 
Send ye men under one, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of Yahuwah, sent, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Yasharal. So these were not spies. These were men who Yah sent, and they didn't have to go as spies. They didn't have to go sneak over there and act as if because the Most High sent them. And they so now when they went over there, two of them did not have fear. Ten of them de did. Now, there's a promise from Yah that, that, that he's going to send them to a land that's flowing with milk and honey. So Yah has a set apart people that he's going to send to a set apart place. Now, in order to get to the set apart place, it has to be done by faith. And it's done by faith, meaning that it's done based on a word or something that Yah said. Because the only way you can obtain faith is by hearing, hearing the word of Yah. So, they go over there for 40 days. And so, when they go over there for 40 days, they, 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 they see everything. They see what's going on. They, 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 they do it. Verse 25 of Numbers 13 says this. And they return from searching um, of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. So they came back. These heads of the house are these families, are these tribes. These are called leaders. And so they go over here and they come back. And when they come back, they go to Moses, they go to Aaron, and to all of the congregation of the children of Yasharal in the wilderness of Paran, of Paran and Kadesh, and brought back a word unto them and to all the congregation. And they showed them a fruit. They, they came back, they showed the fruit of the land. They tell them, look here, man, we went over there, we came to the land where you sent us, and surely, Man, look here. It was a land that was flowing. We're making honey. Look here. And, and, and this is the fruit. But look at verse 28. It says this. It says, nevertheless, the people, the people be strong. They dwell in the land. And the cities are very uh, a walled and great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. So my, my point, I'm trying to make out this, this right here. That, um, that, 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 that when you want to be set apart, you can't lean to your own understanding. You can't lean to what you see. You can't be focused on things like that. But you got to really pull yourself out and set yourself apart by Yah's word, by Yah's commandments, and not your own understanding. Because he set apart like that. He set apart based on himself. He self-existed. And he tells us to be set apart like him because he set apart. But now let's hear the only way you can be like your father, you got to know he's like your father. In the natural, you see sons just like their fathers act. Some might have some of his father's characteristics. Like in the natural, my biological father, he walks around with his head to the left a little bit. When he stands, he stands like this right here. Head be to the left. That, 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 that's something that he does. Subconsciously, he does it. When you look at me, most of the time, my head be to the left. I said, so hold your head up. My head is held up. Now your head to the left. I look at my brother, uh, one of my brothers, uh, Kendall. He look around. Sometimes he stand. His head be to the left. <laughs> but he stand like his father. It is it, not really, really necessarily something that, that, that he has to learn from his father. Or, or I have to learn from my father. But it's something that's already in us. It's inherited. So it's hereditary. So we stand with our heads to the left like our daddy because we inherit, we inherit that. So we realize that Yah is our father. We can be set apart like our father. Why? Because it's part of our inheritance. But you got to be able to see that. You can't see that looking at Yah from the wrong perspective. You got to be able to see that looking at Yah from how Yah wants you to see him. So they go to this place, this promised land. And so now listen, when they get over there, they, 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 they say, man, you told us the truth. Now, 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 you, you know what I see is strange? They say, you know what? You write about what you said about the land. But nevertheless, the people of the land, they show them us. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. The most high can't be partly right. He's all the way right. So if you see what he said about one thing, you have to know that he is, is sure about everything. 
And so now the people begin to, 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 to complain. Caleb stands up and says, look here, y'all. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Be quiet. Stop. Hey, stop. Let's go ahead and go up at once and possess the land, for we are well able to overcome it. Caleb believed y'all. So then, then, therefore, Caleb was set apart. And being set apart, you are able to enter into the place y'all want you to go. Those men of that place, they, they didn't want to hear it. They brought up an evil report of the land. Verse 32 says, they brought up an evil report of the land of which they searched until the children of Yasharal, saying, the land, though which we have gone to search it out, is a land that eat of the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw are our great statues, and we saw giants over there, the sons of Anak, and, 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 and which come over the giants, and we are in our own sight. Grasshoppers. And so, we were in their sight. Whoa, wait a minute. How are these men going to have the audacity or the mitigated God to say that in those people's sight, they're grasshoppers? Well, they didn't talk to the folks. <laughs> the folks didn't tell them that. It's some they conjured up in their own mind. And my point is that when you want to be set apart, you can't tell yourself you can't be set apart. Because once you tell yourself you can't be set apart, that's when it becomes difficult for you. You can't fall for the tricks of the adversary. Or, 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 or as, as, as some of the old school say, you know, you can't fall for the okie doke. Because when you fall for the okie doke, you can't make it to the next place in your life. Because of the evil report. Listen, what's going on here? What's been operating? What spirit what are those people operating in? They were operating in the spirit of fear. See, let me tell you this right here to, make, to draw the line. We're going to just go ahead and draw the line in the sand. You're going to be either set apart or you're not going to be set apart. To not be set apart means that you are an enemy of Yah. Because guess what? If you're not set apart, you're part of the world system. And so the adversary promotes fear. That's his pattern. The example I can give to you is Genesis 3, where Adam went around and hid himself, and y'all asked Adam, well, where are you? Adam said, I was afraid, so I hid myself. That's the adversary. That's his spirit. Yah did not give you the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, he gave you love, a hover, a, a power, and self-discipline, or a sound mind. He didn't give you a spirit of confusion, make your mind run everywhere. You don't have to struggle with being set apart. No. Remember what I said earlier, John 14, 30, when Yahushua says, the prince of this world he, um, is coming, uh, but he have none in me. Why? Because Yahushua was set apart. He was going to do the will of Yah in spite of the adversary. And he was going to use the word of Yah as his defense to obey y'all. And listen, uh, uh, Philippians 2 uh, said, verse 5, I believe, said it's the same mind that was in Hamashiach being us. What was the mind of Hamashiach? He denied his own self-interest. That's how you are set apart. See, if Yahushua denied his own self-interest, he was only following the pattern of his father. What do I mean? Because y'all denied his own self-interest. By sending his son. Yah said no to himself. Yes, he did. By sending Yahushua. Yahushua said no to himself. Yes, he did. How do I know? Because he said, nevertheless, not my will. But your will be done. We ought to say no to ourselves by saying no to our own self. And that make us set apart by following the same pattern our father or a started. He did a selfless thing. And so we can do the same thing and not be selfish and live in a sinful life. Because living a sinful life means you're not set apart. Yahushua gave us power over all the enemy. Yes. And I'm going to tell you this. You don't have to sin on purpose. And I mean intentional sin. 
and we're going to get to that in a minute, to prove to you the point. There's two types of sin. And we'll get to them in a minute. And one of them, you don't have to do. So anyway, because of the negative report of the people, uh, of, of these leaders, Numbers 14 verse 1 says this. It says, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And, all, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Yasharal murmured against Moses mm -hmm. and against Aharon. And the whole assembly said unto them, Would Elohim that we had died in the land of Mitzrayim, in the land of Egypt. And with Elohim, we have died in this wilderness. And wherefore have Yahuwah brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? That's not, that's not a set-apart mindset. And they said one to another, let us make a captain. Mm. And let us return into Egypt. Y'all see this? These folks rebelled against y'all. Let me say this to you. If you don't set yourself apart and live for y'all, you are in rebellion. You're rebellious. There's no way around that. It ain't no if, ands, and buts about it. We're going we're gonna to strike up some real issues today. Assembly division. I got a few folks. I hope you're watching. You might see it later. They went to this assembly. And they left and divided the assembly. Started their own thing. They're not set apart. Because y'all don't bring division. They are in sin. And you know your name. Now you, my brother, you're accusing me of talking about you one time. If you're watching, I'm talking about you now. I am. Because you know why? You brought division. You couldn't get past yourself. You couldn't, you, you, you couldn't try to reconcile. You're not the adversary to tear something up. Here's the foolish part on your behalf. You said y'all sent you. What did he do? Tell you to go or sin. Covenants don't last for seasons. They last for lifetimes. You can't be set apart and divided at the same time. Because Leviticus tells us clearly, do not bear a grudge, but rather love your neighbor. I had two men, older man, he travels, he, he makes caskets, he know his name. You know your name if you're watching. He had a younger man, long beard, white man. They came to the assembly, they are not set apart. They bring division. Both men came, and I hope you're watching. I don't bite my tongue, I said it's a prophet. Both men came to me, Asked me to license them to minister. They never showed up. They never came back. I found out two weeks later, you had your own congregation. You called to try to apologize, but guess what? You didn't fix it. You are not set apart doing those things. Scripture clearly tells us, because our prayers be hindered when we bring division, because the scriptures say, when you want to bring your gift, it don't mean $20, $30, $10, hundred or a thousand, and put it on the altar. The altar is not a stage with one step. You stand on, put buckets on, or crap on. The altar is a place in the scripture of sacrifice. It don't change because you have a church building now. That's not an altar. That's called a stage. Mm. Or some folks call it pool piece or whatever. But it's called a stage. But an altar is a place of sacrifice where the individual is to take their gift, that gift they bring to that altar is called a sin offering. And that's for a sin committed out of ignorance. And Yahushua, the Messiah, the one, the same one who tells us to deny our own selves, he also tells us we bring our gifts to the altar. We find our brother got a fault against us. We ought to leave our gift at that altar. We ought to go and get it back. Get it straight with our brother. And then come bring that gift. I believe maybe in Matthew 6, I'm not sure, but, but Matthew 6 does say this. If you don't have forgiveness towards your brother, y'all can't forgive you. So if you leave an assembly, 
because you got a grudge, because you got a problem, guess what you got to do for your prayers are heard? You got to repent, not just to the Most High Yah, to your brother as well. The greatest commandment that all the Torah and the prophets hang on is love. Loving Yah and loving your brother. That's called being set apart. And if y'all haven't spoken to me and we ain't got together, you might still be in error. And I tell the truth, I don't bite my tongue and I don't apologize for it because it's time out for us to continue to allow the adversary to speak negative report to these false gender back leaders that's causing y'all to keep us in the place of wilderness because of our lack of trust. These men cannot go to the next place. These people cannot go to the next place because of a negative report from these leaders. And when, and when these leaders gave a negative report, they lied on Yah. Why would Yah tell you to go to a place that I'm going to show you? Why would Yah send you to that place for you to see it, to come back and say, you can't go? No. No. Yah don't send you places. And tell you to go do something you can't do. He got more confidence in himself than that. We just read earlier, he gave a fair warning to Pharaoh. Now look here, man. Israel, that's my son. My firstborn son. Yeah. Let him go. If you don't let him go, I'm going to kill your son. Your firstborn. And y'all did exactly what he said. Meaning from my perspective, he meant it. So anyway... 14 and 9 says this. Uh, Only rebel not against Yahuwah, neither fear you, the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and Yahuwah is with us. Fear them not. And listen, because these men got ready to, to, to teach this truth, and to share this truth, to help these people get out of this wilderness, to get past this place of, of being stopped, to change their mindset, they want to kill Moses and Aaron and Joshua and Caleb. For helping them. Ain't that a shame? That people want to kill you for trying to show them how to be set apart. They want to kill you for trying to show them how to obey Yah. Because most folks who don't want to be set apart don't walk by faith. They use an excuse to remain bound in their sin. You don't have to be bound by fornication. You don't have to be bound by being a homosexual. You don't have to be bound by racism. You don't have to be bound by poverty. You don't have to be bound by any kind of intentional sin. You don't have to. You can be free if you trust Yah. He said, by all the congregation bade, bade stones, excuse me, by all the congregation bade stone them with stones. Stone them with stones. Kill them. Take them out of here. And the esteem of Yahuwah appeared in a tabernacle of the congregation before all the people of Yasharal. Now, Yah shows up and gives it to destroy these people because they're lack of faith. They're lack of belief. Moses had to Pray for them. He had to intercede for them. And y'all heard them. So now, let's go to Numbers 15. And let's give it the two types of sin. Because you all, this may be a lengthy lesson. A lengthy uh, series. Because there's so much to it being set apart. But Numbers 15, the Torah, you know, Yah tells Moshe, he started dealing with the children of Yashara about making vows and, 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 and sacrifices. And um, so let's, let, let, let's deal with Numbers uh, 15, 22 says this. It says, and if you have erred and, and not observed all the commandments um, which Yahuwah have spoken to Moshe, even all that Yahuwah commanded you by the hand of Moshe for the day of Yahuwah commanded Moshe and henceforward among your generations, then it shall be if all committed by ignorance. Then it shall be if aught committed by ignorance without knowledge of the congregation that all the congregation shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering for a sweet savior unto Yahuwah with his meat offering and his drink offering according to the manner and one kid of the goats for a seed offering. And the priest shall make an atonement 
for all the congregation of the children of Yasharal, and it shall be forgiven them. For if it is ignorance, and they shall bring uh, their offering, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah, and, their, uh, for, and for their sin offering, for their ignorance, and it shall be forgiven all the congregation of the children of Yasharal and the stranger that sojourneth among them, seeing all the people were in ignorance. So the first one is dealing with, is, is dealing with uh, um, uh, ignorance. So, so, so if you if if if, if, if you if you're ignorant of certain things, listen, you can still strive to be set apart because Yah knows that you don't have an understanding. But when it comes to it, in this day, they were to give a sacrifice and to atone for their sins. Now, in our days, now because we have Yahusha, Hamashiach, he is the atonement of our sins. So it's already been a sacrifice. So what we need to do is repent, turn from it, ask for forgiveness, and begin to do better when we learn better. As the saying goes, you know better, you'll do what? You'll do better. But when you don't know better, you can't do better. But this is this is a sin committed out of ignorance. This is for the entire congregation. Here's for the single person. Uh, verse 27, 15, 27 says this. And if in his soul sins through ignorance, then he shall uh, 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 then he shall bring a she goat of the first year for a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly. Where he sinned by ignorance before Yahuwah to make atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. And you should have one law for him that sinned through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Yasharal and for the stranger that sojourned among them. So, individually, if you sin for ignorance, whether you are Yasharal, Israel, or you are grafted into the covenant promise. You are a stranger that's grafted in, in, in us. The same Torah is for you that if you see it out of ignorance, you have an opportunity to repent of it. Why? Because you didn't know. And that's the definition of a mistake. True mistake. And so you can strive to be set apart as you're growing in, y'all, realizing, you know what? I didn't know I was wrong right here. But I'm going to cut this part off of me because I want to live for y'all. I want to seek y'all. I want to be in this purpose. So, I, so, so as you grow in your life and as you seek y'all and pursuing him, learning his Torah, as you're fasting, as you're praying, as you're setting yourself, yourself apart, you're learning what pleases y'all and what not pleases y'all. So when y'all bring to your attention those things that you didn't have no idea was wrong, you turn from it, you can still strive. To be set apart, and you can be set apart. But now, that's one type of sin that many of us can't help that we do. But now, listen, that's not all sin. Verse, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some examples of intentional sin or acting presumptuously, so we can no longer have an excuse to be like that. So now, because you say, you know, I didn't know that I was born. You know, well, we was all born in sin. So if you want to say you're a homosexual. I don't believe we can, you, be, you can be born a homeless, be a homosexual. I believe it's a choice. But if you want to have an excuse to say I was born like that, well, then you were born ignorant. And so you have an opportunity to turn from it, repent. You didn't know better. But if you knew better and you continue to remain in that, that sin, you might just be judged from this point out because you never know better. So verse 30 of Numbers 15 says this. It says, but the soul that doeth ought presumptuously. What does this word presumptuous mean? Presumptuously means uh what 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 this might this might be the wrong one. Yep, let's go to the other one. Y'all, I, I don't think it's y'all. I think I think the word is supposed to be in the place is um is is yeah a room a, a room. It means uh to be highly active to raise or arise or raise to bring up exalt extol give up haughty haughty can be pride he um. Lift, lift up on, make on, set up on, high, hold up, uh, to, to promote, to pr presumptuously, be proud, be proud. So the soul that despise the word of Yah, we'll be that in a minute. So, so, so the soul that acts pride, prideful, 
to be presumptuous, to be prideful, um, to, to be prideful. Whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same, the same reproach of reproach of what's the word reproach means? Uh, uh, blaspheme. So blaspheme in the work of Hakodesh is to act presumptuous, to act proud, to despise, to go against something on purpose, not out of ignorance. So the soul that reproach of or the spash or blaspheme Yahuwah. That soul shall be cut off from among his people because he has despised. What does the word despise mean? He has uh, uh, despised, disesteemed, uh, took, took, took away the esteem, uh, contempt, uh, think to scorn or bow, uh, 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 a vile person. So you have, so because that soul has despised the word of Yahuwah and have broken. His commandment. And their soul shall be utterly cut off. And his iniquity shall be upon him. The word iniquity is avon. It means perversity. That is uh, uh, morally evil. Fault, iniquity, mischief. Or his punishment uh, uh, of, of sin shall be upon him. His sin shall be upon him. So that's someone who hears the word. Has an understanding of what's being said. But still takes the opportunity to sin anyway. And so the example uh, that, I'm, that we're going to use is this. Numbers, because I, I, I'm trying to show you how to be set apart. That's my point. And I'm showing you that, 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 that if you're sinning on purpose, you can't be set apart. I'm trying to show you through my example to number 13 and 14 that if you despise Yah's word by not having faith, by going against what Yah says, about listening to bad leadership telling you you can't obey something that Yah said you can obey. That's not being set apart. That's want to remain in the course of the world because the course of the world, the way the world acts, the way the world carries themselves is, is, is to not, 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 not to believe y'all, but to walk in fear, to, 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 to walk in doubt, to walk in unbelief based on what they see. You can't walk by faith and at the same time tell me that y'all going to give you common sense. No, because at times uh, faith supersedes your common sense. Because common sense tells you you can't walk on water. But faith calls Peter to walk to Yahushua, who's on the water already walking. So, 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 so we don't live by common sense. We, 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 don't, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. At times starting out, yes, and, and growing in your faith, yes, it's difficult at times. Yes, it takes work. But you know what? How you overcome those challenges? You overcome by praying. You overcome by being still. You overcome by seeking Yah, praying and fasting so Yah can guide you. And then you overcome even, even by that, by obeying what he says to do in the moment he says to do and not say, you know what? We can't do it. Because you can. So now, Numbers 15, 32, I'm going to read it all the way to first 36 and we're going to explain and we're going to go on a little further. But it's easy. So Numbers 15, 32 through 36 says this. Uh, and the children of Yasharal were in the wilderness. They found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they found him gathering sticks, uh, brought him unto Moses and Aharon and unto all the congregation. And they put him in the ward. They put they like the mother, put him in the room, put him in the place. Because it was not declared what should be done to him. And Yahuwah said to Moses, uh, the man shall utterly be put to death. And all the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died as Yahuwah commanded Moses. Now, people say that, 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 he, that here's a lie people have told. Uh, they say that, um, they say that, 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 that God, the so called God of the Old Testament, is mean and he don't have grace. He's just killed them. There's a lie from, from, from the adversary through these false leaders. Uh, first of all, Yah has always had grace. He's always had compassion. How do I know this? Did Yah kill Moses when Moses kicked that man buried him in the sand? Do you see anywhere in the scriptures of Yah bringing it back up? Did Yah forgive David? Is David still considered a man out of Yah's own heart today? 
Yes, he is. Did David have Uriah killed? Yes, he did. Did David commit adultery? Yes, he did. What did David do? David repented. He turned from it. He begged for mercy. Yah says in the scriptures, he says, I never, ch I changed not. So Yah has always been compassionate. Yah has always had an open uh, ear to hear you, an open heart, because he's always been a father to his children. So this man right here was, this man was a wicked man. He despised Yah's word. He didn't care. He was not remorseful. He was not repentant. So he didn't die for Yah being mean. Yah knows your heart. Don't be a fool and think that Yah was being mean to this man. Yah knows his man's heart. Yah judged the man based on the man's own heart. But in that case, it's many of y'all who are watching on this, this, this Facebook you all who are going to be on YouTube watching and listening, y'all who are on the podcast listening, and you can't sit here and tell me that you have not done wrong on purpose at times in your life. And guess what? you still alive. So if y'all was that wicked and harsh and cruel and mean and evil and going to kill you for sinning like that, then every last one of us should be dead right now. And my, from my perspective, none of us are dead. So y'all has always had compassion. He's always had mercy. He's always had grace toward his people. The liar is the adversary, not y'all. And to be set apart, you can't act presumptuously. You can't despise Yah's word. You got to listen and you have to obey Yah's word. They gave the example. This man was gathering sticks on the Shabbat. This man heard what was said to him. This man understood even in the Exodus about not going out working on the Shabbat. But yet and still, he chose to make a decision to go disobey Yah. And so he was judged. But what Yah said, what did Yah say? We're going to read. 37 through 41, and we're going to try to wrap things up after we get finished experiment. May go a little further, we don't know yet. But what did y'all say? Numbers uh, 15, 37. We're going to give the example. And, and, um, and Yahuwah said unto Moses, uh, uh, Yahuwah spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharal, and bid them that they, that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh, throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the border of a garment, a river of blue. Uh, the sea far and some translations say, 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 say um, the sea far and some translations uh, say zeet zeet. They say zeet zeet and then some translations say fringes. Hallelujah. I wear fringes and I wear zeet zeets on my clothes. <clears throat> so it says this, it says, uh, and it shall be because this is the part we want to get to. And this shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Yahuwah and do them uh, and, that, and that ye seek not after uh, your own heart uh, and your own eyes after which you uh, used to go a whoring. You use your own heart and eyes to go be in a hole <laughs> or go a whoring. Um, and that you may remember and do all my commandments and be Kodesh unto your Elohim. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who which brought you out of the land of Misraim to be your Elohim. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, your mighty one. So now, this ZZ is to put us in remembrance of Yah's word. So Yah wants us to get visual things to put us in remembrance of his word so we can't go a horn. And so that we can be Kodesh. Yah's word is what helps us to be set apart. Not our own understanding. Not us looking at them and saying, that's a grasshopper. Who? I mean, uh, no, my man, I'm a grasshopper. That's a giant. And I know I look little at him. That's not always the truth. It's the saying that I heard before. I agree with it. When it says that people don't see you how you see yourself. You may think that you are a grasshopper, but they might not see you as a grasshopper. You may think you're insignificant, but they might not see you as being insignificant. So you can't leave your own understanding. That's how the adversary gets you. Gideon in Judges 6. Let's go to Judges 6. I'm supposed to have my reader in here. Reading for me. Hallelujah. Okay. So Judges 6. We're going to go to um, Judges 6 and 11. Verse 11. Says this. Well, let's go back to the Bible on the screen so y'all can see it. <clears throat> and 
And there came an angel of Yahuwah and sat under an oak, which was in Orpah, in, in, in uh, Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash, the, the, the Abizrite. And his son, and his son Gideon, threshed wheat by the winepress to hide from the Midianites. And the Malachim, or the Malach of Yahuwah, appeared unto him and said unto him, Yahuwah is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now listen, Gideon is doing what? In the wine press, threshing wheat to hide it. So if he's trying to hide something from somebody, he's fearful of somebody coming to take what he has. That's the only way he's going to be hiding it. <laughs> but when the, Mal when, 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 when the, when the Malak came to him, or the angel came to him, and called him a mighty man of valor. So what I'm telling you is, y'all don't see you how you see yourself. People don't see you how you see yourself. So you got to stop calling yourself insignificant. You got to stop calling yourself a loser. You got to ca stop calling yourself defeated. And you got to begin to call yourself what y'all called you. I am a son of Yah. Why? Because I'm led by his Ruach. I am a son of Yah because he told... He told Pharaoh that. I'm a son of Yah because Yahushua says when you pray, you pray like this. Our Father. Let's go to the, uh, Matthew 6. Matthew 6 says this. Um, again, that verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in the Shamayim, in heaven. Now, listen here. I believe that when Yah reveals himself, he wants you to know him as he is. So if he wants you to know him as our God, Yahushua probably would have said, our God. I believe that Yah is intelligent. I believe he's wise and he has an understanding of how he wants you to know him based on the fact of all the examples he gave Moses. How he told Abraham to do certain things. What he said through the other prophets. He spoke directly specifically of what it was he wanted. He told Pharaoh, yeah, uh, Moses, Pharaoh was going to harden his heart. It happened exactly like he said it. Yahushua told Peter, you go to deny me three times, it happened exactly like he said it. So I believe that Yah is specific when he speaks to us of how he wants us to know him. And he tells us through Yahushua in Matthew 6 verse 9, after this manner, pray, uh, therefore pray ye our what? Father. Which are in Heaven, I've been new. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take my stab at it today. Um, for those of you all who um, are watching, <clears throat> going to take my stab at it. And what we're going to do today, we're going to, we're going to read this uh, 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 message prayer. We're going to read it in Hebrew. And, and, and so we can bring out some good stuff about it. If this thing load up right. <laughs> Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Because it has to be, it has to be an intimate thing. Most people cannot defy, excuse me, identify with a God because they don't know how to approach it because they feel like I'm only a man. Who am I? I can't approach him. He's a God. And so they put God, or they put Yah on a level that he don't put himself on. Because again, like I just told you, the word, I'm not, the word Elohim don't mean the word God. I believe Yah is much more bigger than that. And so, they, and so because of our ignorance and us not really knowing, you know, uh, who Yah is or how Yah wants us to know him, 
we we continue to live um, defeated lives. We continue to live lives of being bound uh, by sin, being be, being bound by fornication. Because why? We 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 don't know how to seek Yah because we, we because we don't know Him. So he says, Yahushua says this, uh, I'm reading in Hebrew then English. Says this. He says, Avinu, Shabbat Shabbayim, Yikwadesh Shemcha, Tabo Machuteka, Yaseh Rezonka, Kebar Shabbayim, Ken Ba Arrest Et Lachim, Kukenu, Tenlanu, Hayom, Uslach Lanu, Uslach Lanu, Kate Anu, Kifor, Shesonchim, Gamma Naknu, Gamma Naknu, Lakotein, Lanu Vial, Tevianu, Lede Nisiyon, Kain, Akiin, Kaut Zenu, Mim Hara, Ki Lacha, Hamam Lacha, Beha Gura, Beha Tiferet, Le Olami, Olami. So he says, Our Father, Avenu. Shabbat Shemaim, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. What does that hallowed mean? That word hallowed means Kodesh. Set apart is your name. You are set apart. Your name is set apart. Your authority. Hallelujah. Anything about his name, Yah, as Yahuwah, is talking about set, your authority is set apart. Your authority is not the same authority as the course of this world. Because why? Our Father has a righteous judgment. Hallelujah. He's a righteous Father. So he says, hallowed be your authority. Set apart your authority and your kingdom come. Your kingdom come, Almighty Yah, in, in, in my life. Your will be done on the arrest. Let your will be done here, O Father, as it is in the Shemayim. And my Father, give us this day our daily bread. Give me, O Father, my provision. Uh, 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 for me, help me to live by your man who help me to live by, by, by your daily bread because we think the daily bread is always the, 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 the big roll or, or we think the daily bread is always the hollow bread mm. Mm. yeah Ooh. but the daily bread is Yahushua yeah. the daily bread is that man who Hallelujah. that they call manna, the daily bread is what we live on Yes. Give us your bread. Give us your, your word today, Almighty Yah. Because that's how we live. We don't, we don't live based on a, a natural thing that, 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 that's flowing, Almighty Yah, with the course of this world. But we live based on your word because th that's how we live. Man does not live on bread alone. Hallelujah. But by every word that proceeds out of uh, the mouth of Yah. And forgive us our debts, Almighty Yah. As we forgive our debtors, Almighty Yah, mm -hmm. the things that we've done, our trespasses, our sins, our, 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 our wasteful ways of thinking. Oh, my Father, please forgive us of us acting presumptuously. Things that we know we owe. See, see, we got to get a clear understanding. A debt is something, um, a debt, a debt is something um, that, 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 uh, that we know we owe. <laughs> you hear me? See, I know that I owe uh, 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 the payment when it's due on, on my, um, my my vehicle. You know, I know, you know, I owe the money, you know, the debt, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, my house note, you know, or, or, or I'm going to get put out, you know, or I ain't going to be able to ride, you know. So, 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 so what I'm saying is that when we know we, that we owe something, and, and, and to know you owe something mean, mean that you know you've gotten yourself into something. Mm. So you know there's some things going on with you. Some stuff that, 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 that's, that, that's not right. You know, you know, and we know our Father is set apart. So, oh, 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 Father, help me to be set apart. Please forgive me of my debts. Oh, 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 as I don't bear a grudge to follow the Torah, you know, and I forgive my debtors. You know, praise Yah. Hallelujah. You know, so forgive us our debts. As we forget our debtors and lead us not into temptation. Help us not to give in unto the evil inclination that appeals to us to do wrong, the intentional sin, but deliver us from the evil. 
from the evil one. Give me the ability to overcome the adversary. See, this right here is the intention of sin. Don't let me fall into temptation, Almighty God, and sin against you through fornication, through adultery, uh, uh, through homosexuality, through stealing, through backbiting, through envy, through lasciviousness, through reverence, through murdering. Help me not to give it to that, Almighty God. Help me to stand. Help me not to give it to the Lashon Hurrah, gossiping, talking about people, forbidden speech. But help me, Almighty God, to overcome. And not be uh, led into the temptation. But deliver me from the evil one. For yours, Almighty Father, is the kingdom. And uh, the dunamis power. The dunamis. The power. And the extent uh, forever. See, see, we can be set apart if we learn to know who Yah is. If we learn to love him and know him as our father. And quit trying to look at him you know, as a God. Because he's much more than that. And the word Elohim again does not mean God. If we look in the Greek, it says Theos. And then and one of those meanings, it means magistrate, the mighty ones and, 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 and order. You know, but anyway, so we, we, we need to straighten up. Quit, quit, quit giving ourselves an excuse to remain in a place we're tired of being in. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get out of those places we're tired of being in, being in we have to eliminate, eliminate the excuses and walk by faith. Can't be saying we are like grasshoppers. Can't say we can't do it. Because that's going to cause us to remain in the wilderness. And cause us not only us to die. If you look at Numbers 13, everybody that was 20 and up, I'm pretty sure the whole assembly wasn't crying like, like every single person. But guess what? Everybody 20 and up still was punished. So you could be the hymns of your own folks being set apart. You mama, you daddy, you brothers, you could be the hymns of your own family members not coming to y'all. You could be the hymns of your own people running from y'all or your own demise. Why? Because you refuse to live a set apart life. You believe what you see. You believe your circumstance. You believe how it feels. You believe what it looks like instead of you believe in y'all. You can't have that kind of mindset. We got to learn how to say, you know what? Help me, y'all, to be able to do your will. Show me how to be set apart and then yield ourselves to allow y'all to show us and not grieve the rule of Kakodesh, not do wrong on purpose and not resist y'all. But we should be resisting the adversary. Resist the adversary. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of y'all. Push back. Resist the adversary and he'll flee from you. Praise y'all. I'm done for the day. Hallelujah. So I want you all to know we can be set apart people. We can live a Kodesh life. And don't have to live contrary to Yah's word. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. So I'm going to pray. Um, and then Pastor Karen's going to come and give announcements. And we're going to uh, end it. Hallelujah. She's going to come and, and, and greet you all. And give announcements. And we're going to hallelujah. So praise Yah. So Almighty Yah, we thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your strength and your loving kindness. Thank you, Almighty, for being our Father and our Redeemer. And our, and, and, and our strengthener, Almighty Yah. We ask you, Almighty Yah, to help us to be able to live set apart lives. Show us what it takes, what, what, what we should do. Help us to walk by faith. We know, Almighty, you're going to give us the aid to overcome. We have the rule of Kakodesh that's here, the comforter, the one that's called alongside us that, that, that you've given to us yes. to convict us of sin and to lead and guide us into all truth. We have Yahushua who gave his life on our behalf and was resurrected, Almighty God, and now lives and sit, and sit at your right hand in your power. We thank you for that. We have your Malachim here. You know, that, that, that protects us and guards us because you've given them charge concerning us. And we have your words. We have all the tools and the weaponry that you provided for us to be able to overcome. So I pray, Almighty, help us to overcome and live set apart lives. Live lives that's preaching to you and not live lives that's contrary to your word. Help us, Almighty God, not to continue to remain defeated or remain backwards, but to go forward in you and live uh, a life in you and, be, and become that peculiar person, that treasure that you call us to be. In Yahushua HaMashiach's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. So we get Pastor Karen come give us an um, announcement that we're going to be gone. But y'all be blessed. And listen, <laughs> live set apart lives. You know, I name names. You know why? Because <laughs> what we do is we live religiously. And we try to sweep stuff up under the rug. The only thing that comes from putting things under the rug is lumps and knots. They cause you to trip in the end because you never did get rid of the problem. See, the thing is, everybody wants to say they got salvation, but we talk about people, we put folks down, we don't know how to learn how to get along with each other, we divide and, right. and cause a ruckus. But having the audacity to get on our knees and pray, you ain't got no conviction. 
How dare you for you praying to Yah but can't even forgive your brother? You can't love your brother. You playing. You playing. Said, no, grow up, man. I name you. Man, look here. I will call your names out, brother, but you know who you are. Hallelujah. Because I want to call your name out. Because you know who you are. And the thing that's so sad is, we hurt people. But we make it all about us. Most of you parents hurt your children. Putting down your pastors. Putting down leadership. Got your children despising authority. And you wonder why they don't, they don't want to straight. Because you told them how to disrespect the leadership. If you can't fit the pastor, you're going to show give the police hell. You ain't going to kill them about that judge or that teacher. Because guess what? The Yasharal, we, we, we set the tone. We lead by example. We speak the word of Yah out of our mouth. If you can't teach the children to respect Yah and his leadership, how do you expect for them to respect you and leadership in the community? You think in front of your, your children, in front of you, doing right is the only form of respect? How would you feel, mama, seeing your daughter? And I'm going to say it. They might get offended. Get hit from the back when you walk in and call them. <gasps> oh! But guess what, mama? You was being a whole yourself in your words. It just came out of her actions. See, the thing is, I tell the truth. I don't care if it's about offending nobody. We the head folks leave. We the head folks quit leaving. We didn't get out and just me and my family. We didn't get out to unsubscribe on YouTube. I, I, leaving me don't matter. Because the truth going to still be the truth, period. They left Yahushua. Mm. That day quit following him when he told the truth. And all he said, he was to break from the Shemayim. And he said, eat of me and drink of my blood. They, could, they said it was a hard sin. <laughs> he got done. You know what he said? This is offending you. The first prophet's none. So you know what? People being offended don't mean too much of none else no more. Because the truth still got to go forward. Most of our lives are jacked up. Mm. We, 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 we're caught up. You know, because we can't come to reality. We want to, we, you know, some of y'all preachers. Even in the first day, you fornicate, you're a fornicator, but you're, you're big on money, but you're an adulterer. You have mm. sex with other people, mm. and you think it's all right, male and females. Mm. You think that's cool, you think that's fine, because you want to hit her, you got that woman deceiving, and here she is giving you all kind of sex, can't even respect her husband, because your stupid self, you're going to go to hell if you don't repent. You know what, and I pray the most high, slap you on both sides of your chest so you can feel the pain if you cause other folks' lives. Because here it is, it's time for us to be set apart. It's time for us to live a coldest life. It's time for us to be tall, mean, to be, to be mature, to be whole, and quit sitting on purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we done lost all our bearings out here looking stupid. We, we, want, we want for, come on, man. How do you expect a dying world to follow you and you dying yourself? Mm -hmm. World want to live. Mm -hmm. Then you got to be showing them how to get that life. You want an adversary to have none of you like Yahushua? Set yourself apart and quit yeah. being foolish. Or you're going to wind up being like Miriam, being exposed to spiritual dead as you really are by trying to talk about somebody like y'all can't hear you. If y'all hear Miriam and all her wrong, he hear you too. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the most high y'all. The word of truth, fire. Uh, we sounded the alarm. Blowing the trumpet. Lifting up his voice that Abba has given, crying loud, showing the people their what? Their, their sins correct. and transgressions. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And unashamed about it. No, so, <laughs> praises be to, to the Father up above. If you have tuned in today and been live with us, praise Abba for you. Prayerfully, you'll be back next week where this particular Wow, series has been mind blowing. It seems like it, you know, it's just, it gets, and I know uh, this is not correct English, but it gets gooder and gooder. But there's something so good about our Father. You know, He's it's been said and written, He's sweeter than the honey on the honeycomb, but He can correct you and it'll draw you even closer to Him because we begin to see what we need His holiness. Where we should be desperate and longing to be able to stand in his presence. And we can only do that in a certain manner. Being set apart. 
It's not up there, but, but living a Kadosh life. Come on, tune in. We got Facebook Live. It'll be posted to the Facebook page. We have um, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube. We have the uh, Spotify, Spotify. Uh, uh, iTunes, uh, all uh, different uh, uh, plethora of platforms that you can find <laughs> this series on. And we're sounding it loud. Who praises the Most High Yell for a spanking? Who praises the Most High Yell for correction? We all should if you're truly his, if you're truly his children, because he loves those who he corrects, he chastises. Also, you know, because uh, you don't, you don't give a, a teacher. <laughs> oh, and I say it every time, somebody who's been called to teach the word of Yah, the file like that, because Pastor, Pastor Battle lit it up today, gave us truth core truth according to where we live into the 21st what what century, century. hallelujah <laughs> praise Abba for you may Abba continue to use you hallelujah as you remain humble before him praise Abba for the word hallelujah all right announcements are as this boy 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 it was a good message but if we are completely blessed for every time we have an opportunity to go before you. We are thankful to Abba that he has put us here, called us for such a time as this. According to the cry of his people, he raises up leaders to, to, to meet uh, uh, the people where they are and to groom them and to grow them up. And, and in doing that, we have an assembly local assembly we do various different things we're connected to uh different ones around the globe and especially in new york however if you choose north carolina, north carolina uh, also in georgia i mean we have just been blessed by y'all to to connect a divine connection and in that we are we we give so we're asking that for all those that want to give desire to give whether you're paying tithe giving tithe uh, or, you know, giving an offering that you look on uh, in the comments. You can look on our web page. We have a Cash App, PayPal, and Square App. Know that Abba will not allow a sin issue to go unseen. So when you do give, know that it's going in good ground. And we're doing right by what the Father has given us an opportunity to receive from his people. All right. With that being said, we have Sukkot coming up. We are extremely excited, and we're going to be going up, hallelujah, to the well with, <laughs> to the well with our family at uh, Bethel House of Y'all in the Bronx, New York. Totally, T, totally excited. Like you know, I, and, and I'm in great anticipation. If you are in that area and you know nothing about Bethel House of Y'all in the Bronx, New York, reach out to us. Leave a comment. Do whatever you got to do to get to connected that's a good place to be and and i'm in alabama and abba has saw fit that is a reputable place to be true strong leaders hallelujah that are seeking the kingdom of the father leave a message we'll get back to you but we're getting ready to celebrate sukkot extremely excited so there will be more or more details for those who want to reach out want to know where we're going to be to follow hit us up contact us email us message us we're there have a blessed rest of your Shabbat. And remember to live a set-apart life. Mm. Shalom, shalom. Mm -hmm. Shalom.